Interesting. Carson, you just gave her a new car. She can't be angry at you. I know. I have a question about this. Can I come back to it here when we get to here? Is that okay? Okay. Don't let me forget, okay? All right, kiddos. Let's get rocking here today. Um, something that's going to be kind of new for you guys. We kind of talked about this a little bit the other day, but we're going to talk about angles and what else here. Okay? Gradient. Gradient. Okay. Now, in your calculators, your calculators probably have, you might have a button that says, like, VRG in it. Is that right? Carson, I don't have a question anymore. You good, kiddo? Yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so you probably have a button that says DRG in your calculator, which is going to stand for degrees, radians, and G is not going to be anything you need to worry about. It's stand for gradient right there. But guys, we're going to talk about relating angles and degrees. Everything that we've worked with so far, everything's been measured how? In degrees. Now, we're gonna, radius is going to become something that's focal and, and important for you guys as we move through the, the um, course. And uh, we'll get more familiar with that as we move through the course. But today, the, what we want to do is just uh, introduce how are angles and radians um, related to each other. So the question we're trying to answer is, how can you find the measure of an angle in what? Okay. We're accustomed to degrees. We're going to talk about radians, what radians are, and then how you turn a degree measure into a radian. Okay. So goals to accomplish uh, today, we're going to draw angles in what position? So we'll talk about that. We're going to find what's known as coterminal angles, and then we're going to use radian measure on some stuff today. Okay. Guys, I apologize in advance. Lots of vocabulary today. Lots and lots of vocabulary. So it's going to be important to pay attention on this today. Okay, so when we talk about angles right here, angles are always going to have what's known as an initial side. Okay? Initial side is the fixed rate of an angle in standard position in a coordinate plane. Okay? The initial side right here, and I have this diagram for the first three terms is all the same. The initial side is always going to be in a coordinate plane on the positive side of the x-axis. So it's always on the x-axis on the positive side. This is always the initial side of any angle right here, okay? Then the next one is terminal side. And the terminal side says that the ray of an angle in standard position that has been rotated about the vertex in a coordinate plane. Typically when you rotate, what direction is this right here to get to the terminal side? Counterclockwise. When you go counterclockwise, you're always going a positive direction, okay? So I might write this up here. I'm going to write CCW as counterclockwise. You're always moving in a positive direction in terms of the number of degrees. Okay. So if counterclockwise is moving in a positive direction, what do you think clockwise is then? Clockwise is like moving in a negative direction when we start talking about this. Okay. Now both of those sides are saying you've got to make sure you're in standard position. Okay. Standard position of any angle in a coordinate plane is an angle that is in the coordinate plane uh, where the vertex is where, kids? Okay, so the vertex is always at the origin, right there at the center. Okay, and then the initial side is going to be on the positive x axis. This ray and that point, that end point of the ray, or start point, if you will, is always going to be at the origin. Okay, does that make sense to you? Okay, so this side on the x-axis is called the what again? And then the other part of the angle where it lands in a certain quadrant is going to be called your terminal side. Okay. All right. So let's keep rolling with this. Angles are also considered to be coterminal. Yes. So here's an example right here. Okay. So I've got an angle right here where the initial side is on the positive x-axis. Guys, which quadrant is the terminal side in? Okay, now guys, follow the red line around. I could go 315 degrees this way, counterclockwise to get here, or I could go negative 45 degrees clockwise to get there, okay? Now watch the green line. They're saying I can go negative 45, and then if I make a whole revolution again to come back to it, how many degrees would I add or subtract if I make a whole revolution? That's a lot. 360, okay? So coterminal angles, really, guys, are two angles with the same what? And they're going to happen every 
plus or minus 360 degrees. So for instance, right here, kids, if I went 350 degrees counterclockwise to get there, couldn't I go another 360 right here? From here, go another 360, get back to here? Kids have a question. What would 315 plus another 360 equal? 675. So another possible co-terminal angle down here would be 675 degrees. Whatever your original angle is, you just keep adding and subtracting how much to get another co-terminal angle. You just keep adding or subtracting 360 degrees to end up in the same spot, okay? So if my angle is facing that way right there, my angle will be the same every time I rotate how many degrees from where I'm at right now. 360, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So co-terminal, just think, keep adding 360 or keep subtracting how much? Very good, okay? All right, next one. Here we go. Woo, I told you there was a lot of vocab today, didn't I? But it's okay. picture vocab, so it's good. You like the pictures today? I love pictures. I didn't make you draw them today. I thought it would be better if I just gave them to you today. I'm working harder at that. That's one thing that I need to do a better job of as I move forward and help you with this is make sure that the pictures are already there so you don't have to draw them all the time. So a radian. This is going to be fairly new for you. I think you've probably heard of it before. Okay, so it says for a circle with radius how much, kids? It says the measure of an angle in standard position whose terminal side intercepts an arc of the length, what distance? Is considered to be one what? Here's the deal. What they're really saying is this. One radian is the same as like taking this radius right here and saying, okay, I want to take this radius and I want to lay it out here on the, on, the, on, the, on the circle. So it's like saying, okay, I'm going to take this length of the radius right here and I, I'm going to lay it right here. That's how far it would get pretty much. Okay. And what we're really saying is how many of those radii would go all the way around the circle? Okay. Yes. Uh, somewhere. So, guys, let me ask you a question. Do you recall the formula for circumference of a circle? That would be an area. The circumference is actually equal to pi times diameter. Okay, but how many radii make up the diameter? Okay, so we're going to refresh our memory. The circumference of a circle could be written as 2 times pi times r, where r represents what here? Okay, the radius. The question becomes, how many radii does it take to completely get around the whole circle? Well, what do you take an r times to get the whole circumference? Okay, so I'm going to say this. In a circle... In a circle, there are really how many radiuses or radii to make up the whole circumference? You would say what? So I'm going to make a note right uh, here. There are two pi radians. Because a radian is the same length as the what? Radius. Radius. There are two pi radians and a what? Circle. Okay. So in a circle, there's always going to be what? Two pi radians. Okay. In a full circle, how many degrees are there? Three sixty. Okay. So what we're going to work on doing is turning a certain number of degrees into a certain number of radians. But keep this in mind. You know that there's how many radians in a whole circle now? Two pi. And you know there's how many degrees in a whole circle? Which means two pi radians has to equal how many degrees then? And we're going to use that conversion to help us understand this today. Okay. All right, more terms here quickly. Guys, a sector. A sector is like a pizza slice. It's the region bounded by two radii and the arc of the circle. So right here, uh, you guys see the shaded sector? Mm -hmm. This name, would, the, the name of this sector would be sector K T B. Okay, name that sector is A P B, or I could call it B P A. Or I could call it BAP or ABP, as long as I use how many points? Three. 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 Okay. All right. Got a central angle. Got your central angle. It's an angle that's formed by two radii. The angles whose vertex is where in the circle, kids? The center. So I would probably call this angle 
PCQ or QCP. Okay, and then a radius. You know what the radius is, right? Yeah. Distance from the center out to any point on the circle. And then the circumference is just what, kids? Okay, and, and, and just reminding you, the way you find the circumference is to take 2 times pi times the radius. Or, guys, 2 radii make up the what? The diameter. So your formulas for circumference are either 2 pi r if you know the radius, or pi times diameter if you know the diameter. All right? Now guys, I know there's a lot of vocab there, and I went through it pretty quickly, but are you on board with me at this point? Yep. Questions on the vocab right now? Um, does a central angle always form like a sector? Like, is that always a little sector? That's a good question. The answer to that is actually yes. Okay. So your central angle will always form a sector, yep. All right, let's swap, kids. Draw angle in what kind of position? Okay, here's what I want you to do. I just want you to sketch in a coordinate plane right here. So get your x, y axis here. Okay, I'm going to do my best. Okay, guys, when you start talking about drawing angles in standard position, this is going to be the norm as we move through the course throughout the trimester. So, guys, zero degrees. Guys, on a compass, we're used to zero degrees being up north here, right? In a coordinate plane, we're always going to talk about zero degrees being right there, okay? And we said, what direction do we rotate to go in a positive direction in the coordinate plane? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So rotating up here to the y-axis, this would be where 90 degrees is, right? And then what would this angle over here on the left be if I continue counterclockwise? And then... And guys, really, one full revolution would come back to zero being what value here again? Okay, now our job here, kids, is this. We want to draw an angle in what position? Okay, so standard position, the initial side will always start where, kids? Oops, let me get a different color here. So it's always going to start on the x-axis, positive x-axis, right? So isn't this my initial side right here? Okay, guys, talk to me about 390 degrees of rotation. So it's going to go all the way around. It's going to make one full revolution plus how many more degrees? Plus 30 more degrees, right? So won't, won't my terminal side end up in? Okay. And the way they kind of draw this here, guys, is this. They say, okay, to represent 390 degrees of angle, they kind of come in here with this little arc thing. It's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of kind of draw around like this. You're like, okay, I've gone all the way around once, and then I curl back up. It's like a snail shell, if you will. Okay? And then I say that angle is how many degrees there, kids? 300 and 90 degrees. Hey, quick question here. You said that angle was just like how many degrees, though? 30 degrees. What's 390 minus 360? So 30 would be considered what kind of an angle with 390? What was that word? I'll start with a C. Coterminal. Okay, we'll come back to that, okay? We'll come back to it, all right? Okay, friends, let's draw another one. This time, what do you notice about your angle this time? Okay, we've got a negative angle, so am I going to work clockwise or counterclockwise? And I should probably go back to this first example. 390 was positive, so that means rotate how here? So I'm just going to write that down. What should I write right here? Okay, so I'm going to put my angles in here again. This is 0. This is 90. This is 180, right? This is 270. But guys, think about going counterclockwise. If I go backwards right here, 270 could be the same as what first negative value? So 270 could also be negative 90. This could be negative... So I'm going to put a plus minus by the 180. Is that okay, kids? Could be positive 180 or negative 180, depending on what direction you go. Mm -hmm. Guys, if I'm going clockwise right here, negative 90 is also like negative 270. And think about it again, kids. What's 90 minus 360? Mm -hmm. Negative 270 again. Okay, full terminal stuff is going to show up often. Okay, where's that initial side going again, friends? 
I'll do my best here to get that on that. So there's the positive x-axis. What direction am I rotating around? So I've rotated 90. Should I go all the way to 180 or stop shy? Okay, so we think the angle's gonna end up in which quadrant is this down here? Quadrant three, like that. Which is how many degrees, kids? Quick question here. Take negative 160 and add 360. 200 degrees, right? Okay, 200 degrees, my friends. If I would rotate counterclockwise, 200, here's 90, here's 180. 20 more, do I end up in the same spot? Co-terminal, okay? You guys try the last one on your own. Are you going clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay, draw your little snail in there again. See what you get. side in there first. Is that okay with you guys? Bless. All right, my friends, what direction am I rotating? Tell me when to stop, all right? I've gone how far so far? Think about this. Okay. I, I'm going to go by every 90. Is that okay? That's yeah. okay. Okay, so I'll follow the line around here. I'm at 90, 180, 270, 360, right? Yeah. 360 and 90 is 450. Yeah. 540. 630 and how much more? 30. Yeah, I'd go 60 more here, right? And that would do that. This is like a negative 30 degree angle, wouldn't it? So it's down in here somewhere. So do, do, I, I guess the first question is, I don't expect these to be perfect, but what I do expect is to make sure you kind of have that terminal side in the proper quadrant. Did you guys end up with the terminal side in quadrant four there? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. You guys get your little snail shell when you're rotating around there like that then? Oops. Snail shell is kind of fun, isn't it? This is kind of like the course people tell me to start and end are at the same spot, find them. And I just keep going and going and going and never find it. Has that happened to you before? My whole life is like that, I think. Okay, how are you guys feeling about drawing angles in standard position? Okay, with that? Okay. All right, let's check this out then. What do we have? Page three already? Today's kind of a shorter lesson today, so that's a good deal, isn't it? Okay. All right. So we've kind of talked about this already, kids. Finding coterminal angles. Finding coterminal angles simply means you're either adding how much or subtracting how much. Okay. And you can do it as many times as you want. You're either adding or subtracting 360 a certain number of times. Okay. So in this example right here, it says find one positive angle and what? That are? Coterminal with each angle. So, for instance, we start with negative 75 degrees. So, if I want to know a coterminal angle from negative 75 degrees, I could take negative 75 and do what? I could add 360. Does that get me to the positive values then? Yep. So, what's one coterminal angle from negative 75 degrees? Because if I add these things, I'm sorry, how much? 285 degrees. Okay. All right, well, talk to me about this then, kids. Find me an angle that's coterminal that's um, a negative angle 
but not negative 75, a different angle. How'd you get that? Now, do I just add 360 once, or could I add 360 or subtract 360 multiple times? And I've got this wrong. I should do what here? I should subtract 360 here. What did you guys say that this turned out to be? Negative 435. You have 435 degrees. Okay. So let's say just name one positive coterminal and one negative coterminal. Have we accomplished it? Yes. Yeah. However, are those the only two right answers? No. No. I could continue to add 360 or continue to do what? Subtract 360. Very good. Okay. All right. Give me a positive uh, angle that's coterminal to 460. I'm here in 820 because you took 360 plus 460, right? Yep. I have a question. Could I subtract 360 in this case and still have a positive angle? Yeah. yeah. What would that be? So another positive example would be 100. Am I going to just be able to subtract 360 one time to get to a negative coterminal, or am I going to have to do it multiple times? Multiple times. So if I subtract another 360, what would be another coterminal angle? Negative 260. Negative 260. So options for this might be, I don't know. 820 and negative 260, or 100 and negative 260, as long as one is positive and one is negative, okay? And again, you're not just adding or subtracting 360 once. You might have to do it multiple times to satisfy the condition they're asking for, okay? So coterminals, do you guys get that you're just either adding or subtracting 360 here? Yes. Okay. Well, let's get to the big idea then today. Converting between what and what? Okay. Remember I told you, how many radians are in a circle, did we say? Two pi. Two pi radians is the same as what? 360. 360 degrees. Okay. So here's the kicker in this today. Two pi radians is 360 degrees, and I wrote it in a ratio form like this. Couldn't 2 over 360 really reduce? 1 over 100 and... So you guys agree that there's really, for every pi radian that we have, how many degrees are there? Okay, here's your rules, kids. Okay, what are we starting with right here? Okay, negative 150. To go from degrees to radians, make sure you write this down. To go from degrees to radians. What you do is you take your number of degrees, oops, take your number of degrees here, and you times it by pi over 180, like that, okay? So in this case right here, how many degrees are we starting with? And we're trying to turn negative 150 degrees into radians, okay? So we're simply going to take negative 150 degrees and times it by what, kids? Okay, now hear me out about this. Usually when you leave answers in radians, most times, not all the time, but most times, you're going to be left in terms of pi up here, okay? So we're going to take our number of radians, I'm sorry, number of degrees, negative 150. Here's how I want you to express this. We're going to take this times pi over what? Now, guys, follow me through this. Do you agree that negative 150 is like negative 150 over 1? Yeah. So when we're multiplying fractions, top time top, bottom time what? So the top would really be negative 150 times what? And you would put this over what? Now, talk to me, friends. Won't 10 divide into both of these here and here? Forget the pi part for now. Let's just look at the 150 over 180 part. So this is like negative 15 over 18, isn't it? Okay, can't 3 go into 15 and into 18? Yeah. How many times up here? How many times 3 go into 18? So this is going to be equivalent to negative 5 what? Over... Okay. So negative 150 degrees by radians would be negative 5 pi over 6. And if pi is left as part of your solution up here, leave it in there. I want you to leave your answer in terms of pi if it's possible. Okay? 
You guys try one on your own. Uh, how about this? Ooh, I'll make this easy for you. How about 270 degrees? Okay, turn 270 degrees into radians. Two hundred seventy degrees into radians. What's the rule, kids? Okay, what are you guys coming up with here? Three pi over two, I'm hearing. Do they agree? Okay, so what's the rule for turning degrees to radians? So you agree that this becomes 270 pi over 180? Yeah. Oh, I divided by 90. 90 would go into both, right? I just dropped the zeros right here, and then I know that 9 will go into, so I've got 3 pi over 2, you guys agree? Well, kiddos, if going from degrees to radians meant take your number of degrees times pi over 180, anybody got a guess on what it means to go from radians to degrees? What's the inverse of multiplication? But division by fractions is the same as multiplying by the. So to go from degrees to, or I'm sorry, radians to degrees, you would take your number of radians times not pi over 180, but exactly. All right. So how many radians are we starting with up here? Radians times, yep, okay. times 180 over pi. Right there, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I didn't know if it was in nope. land. you're good. So how many radians are we beginning with in this problem? Nine, nine pi over four. So we're going to put nine pi over four. Now what's kind of convenient about this is the following. We're going to multiply by 180 over pi. Uh, well, you guys, we just got done working a lot of rational functions and rational um, operations, rational function operations, what are the pi values going to do to each other under multiplication there? Yeah, yeah one up top, one on the bottom, they're going to do what to each other? So you guys agree your answer is just going to be 9 times 180 divided by 4. A little bit of luck, I think that's 405. Yeah. Sound right to you guys? Mm -hmm. So how many degrees is 9 pi over 4 radians? Hey, think about this. One revolution was how many radians? How many radians did we say were in a circle? Two pi. Two pi. Guys, wouldn't eight pi over four make two pi? Yeah. So does it make sense that nine pi over four, because eight pi over four would reduce to two pi, right? Yeah. Does it make sense that nine pi over four would be a little more than a whole revolution? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's your test. Let's go three pi over eight radians. I want you to turn that into degrees, okay? Doesn't have to always be a whole number, no. You might have some decimals at times. What do I multiply by, friends? 180 over pi. Conveniently, what cancels here? So I'm really going what times what divided by what? 
So this becomes 540 divided by 8. You are on the ball today. I love it. How many had 67 and a half degrees there? Okay. You guys feeling okay about this conversion then? What if it was in like a different format? Like it wasn't like a nice little 9 pi over 4. Okay. So how about it's like 7 radians? I would take 7 times 180 over what? In this case, what you would do then, a couple different things. Pi's don't cancel here, right? If they say, oh, here's 7 radians, you would take 7 times 180, which I have no idea what is that, 700, 560, 1,260? This would be 1,260 over pi degrees. Or this one here, you might want to divide out, and if I go nearest 10 to 100 as an approximation on that. Make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. I think at least in this section, most of the stuff's going to work out nicely. Now, as we progress, we're going to run into stuff like that, definitely. But for now, you're, you're probably going to see a lot of nice things happen at this point. Okay. All right. Questions about converting radians to degrees or vice versa? All with me? All right, friends. Last page. Let's roll on this. There's a big core concept up here. This will be very new for you, but i got to make sure you understand something. Okay. Two things that we look for in um, circles that are marked off by central angles. One of them is called, what am I looking at here? Okay, I'd like to know how long this curve is. How many feet? Like, uh, I don't know, how many of you saw Mr. Denner out on the track last night with that little wheel? Could watch him walk around there and measure stuff, but sometimes we'd like to know the length of a curve right here at times. And one of those things that we're trying to find sometimes is called arc length. Right here it says the arc length defined as S is equal to R times what? Theta. Theta is going to be my central angle measure. Okay. Theta is actually right in here for you. All right. Okay. Now the thing you need to understand about this core concept, I know it's a little blurry up here, but you guys on your notes, it says the arc length S and the area of a sector with radius R and central angle theta is measured in what? Radians. The thing you need to understand is this: theta must be measured how? Theta's got to be measured in radians in order for this to work, right? Kids, what do you think R represents? The what again? Radius of a circle, okay? Two formulas you're going to get very used to. Arc length is S equal the radius times your angle in what? Theta is measured how again? Radians. Okay. Then the area of a circle is one half r squared times your angle, but the angle must be in what? Radians. Okay. Here we go. This is a cool question down here. It says a softball field down below forms a sector with the dimensions shown. Okay. It says find the length of the outfield fence. So do you guys agree that the outfield fence out here is like an arc length? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also need to find the what? Area, okay. So things we need to know. We need to know the radius. We need to know what R is for the radius. Yeah, this is like a quarter of a circle, isn't it, kids? Where this home plate would be like your center, wouldn't it? Okay, so the radius is equal to what? 200, right? Okay. We also need to know what theta is, my friends. We need to know the number of radians, right? Yeah. Well, right now, we know that the central angle is how many degrees down here, kids? 90. And I can just use 90, right? 90. Okay, now, hey, but talk to me. Why are you doing that? Why are you multiplying by pi over 180? Yeah. To, convert. Right. to convert radian to convert to radians, right? I can't just throw 90 degrees in for my angle measure because these formulas are only going to work if we're measuring the angle how? In radians. So we got times this by pi over what? Okay, how about 90 over 180? What's that going to reduce to? Okay, so by this information right here, we know this. And so in this information, R has to equal what value for radius? And theta is equal to Can I just call it pi over 2? Is that okay, kids? Okay, so first thing we're going to find, let's do the arc length. 
My arc length right here, kids. Let's just say the formula is for arc length, kids. Okay, so my arc length is defined as S. S is equal to R times theta, right? Okay, now quick question here. What's the radius again? Times pi over 2. It's like 100 pi, right? Somebody take 100 times pi and let's go nearest tenth of a foot. One place is fine. 314.2 feet. So if I was running out here on the warning track like they do down in Atlanta, they've got the guy, what's that guy's name that runs in Atlanta for Braves games? They let one guy start here from the crowd, take off, get a big head start, and then do they call him the Flash or something like that? He's so fast. Or the Blaze or something like I can't that. Remember, but have you seen one guy beat him one night. Have you seen the dude face plant? Mm -hmm. The thought he had it one. He was yeah, mouthing it like this, this to the crowd, and then he face planted about two feet from the end. Hilarious. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, uh, all right, I, I'm just throwing formulas out here like, oh, they work, right? Yes. Now watch this real quickly. Do you guys agree that this is like one-fourth of a circle? Yeah. Do this for me real quickly. In your calculators, hop into your calculators. Let's treat this like it's a whole circle first. What's the radius of the whole circle here? The radius is 200. Okay, now take 200 times 2 to get the diameter, right? Take 400 times pi in your calculator. Okay, now guys, you got 400 times pi in your calculator. That would be if this was a whole circle going all the way around here. But what portion of the circle do we have, or what fraction of the circle do I have all the way around here? Take your answer you have right now and divide by 4. Tell me what you end up with. 314 feet. Isn't that what we got down here? So when we think about logically like that, does that match what formula is going to give you? Yeah. Okay, so think of what you understand about arc length. Arc length S is just equal to your radius times your central angle, but your central angle must be measured how? Radians, okay. The other thing we need to do is find the area of the infield. How many square units are in here? Okay, let's just do this quickly. What's the area formula for a circle? Well, or a whole circle. Wouldn't it be pi r squared? Okay, do this for me. Take pi times 200 squared in your calculator. Pi times 200 squared, whatever you get. Pi times 200 squared, that's a pretty big number, right? Okay, now what's, what fraction of a whole circle are we working with? One fourth. So take the answer you just got in your calculator, pi times 400 squared, and divide that by four for me now. What'd you guys get for a number? What'd you guys get for your number when you divide it by four? 10,000, 10,005. So I think there's 10,005 square feet on it. Just think about this logically. Well, guys, the new formula today for area of a sector. Pi, 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 pi. 10,005 pi. No, 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 the five is the pi. Pi is the pi. Oh, I thought you said five, I'm sorry. Ten thousand pi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What what was that in decimal form then? Yeah, Check this out, then, guys. Area formula. What's the area formula now for a sector? Um, theta. Where theta is measured? How again, kids? Okay, check it out. What is your radius again? So we're going to go S equal, or I'm, I'm sorry, this should be an A, shouldn't it? Yes. I'm thinking of arc length. This should be an A right here and here. My bad. This should be an A for area. Okay, so we're going to go one half times, what's going in for radius, kids? Um, 
what did we decide our central angle measure was? Pi over 2. Pi Five. over. Okay, somebody take 200 and square it. I got it. 40,000. 40,000. We'll take 40,000 times a half here. 20,000. So area is going to equal 20,000 pi over. Oh my gosh, looks like things are working out here again. 20,000 pi over 2, is that right? Oh, yeah. 20,000 pi over 2 is the same as? 10,000 pi. Okay. And we know 10,000 pi is approximately how many square feet? 31,415. 9 square feet. Okay, so kids, the two biggies today about finding arc length of a sector and area of a sector. Arc length is equal to what times what? Radius times theta. The area of this shaded sector over here, number of square units on the inside would be one half r squared theta, but it's contingent upon that central angle not being measured in degrees, but being measured how? Radians there. Okay. Kids, what questions do you have for me? All right. <laughs>